The Prisma ORM database system recently migrated away from a Rust backend to an entirely JavaScript TypeScript system. The result was massive, massive speed increases. According to the Prisma developers, they now have 90% smaller bundle sizes and three times faster queries. In fact, it's not just three times faster queries. In some cases, those queries are 11 times faster, but on in general, about three times faster, which means, which means that at least for some things, JavaScript is faster than Rust. Now, now before, before all of you start freaking out and punching and stabbing your screen with forks and whatnot, uh, I, I want to be very clear about the language I'm using here. For some things, JavaScript is faster than Rust. Obviously, JavaScript is going to be slower than Rust for probably most things. <laughs> I mean, that's just the way it is. And the reason that they saw these uh, speed increases was essentially that they then, because they had a pure JavaScript system, they weren't having to translate and, and pass data back and forth between multiple systems uh, running in different ways. And it just made things a little bit faster, a good speed increase. But in general, what this means is there are situations where JavaScript is going to be a little bit faster than Rust. Uh, reading from their, their blog post about this, uh, this is from Prisma's blog post. Moving to a Rust-free client really set the stage for a faster client runtime, a smaller footprint, and simpler deployment story. You no longer needed to worry about runtime-specific quirks or infrastructure providers like uh, Cloudflare workers, limiting the size of the deployed application. We continued on that path and kept iterating on what would become the Rust-free Prisma clients, the results were 90% smaller output, uh, three times faster query execution, significantly lower CPU and memory utilization, simpler deployments, um, and they have the benchmarks to prove it. And the benchmarks do look, do look quite nice. <laughs> Those are good speed increases pretty much across the board. There was one or two benchmarks they had where the Rust deployment was marginally faster, uh, but those seemed to be only for small queries. Anything that was substantially large uh, in those cases, Rust and TypeScript were, were, were faster across the board. Um, and those weren't the only benefits that they saw. Uh, they put this up on their, on their blog, and I think this is a a worthwhile thing to remember, quote, a side effect of the client being built in Rust is that we were limiting who can contribute to the ORM. If you didn't have strong Rust experience, it was far more difficult to make any meaningful contributions. On the technical side, the communication layer between Rust and the JavaScript runtime is much slower than doing things in plain JavaScript. Plus, it creates additional dependencies on the runtime. Um, uh, one of their, their friends said, quote, we remember hearing about Prisma's move away from Rust and thinking about how not dealing with the native add-on API would make supporting Prisma uh, in our system so much simpler. We are all really excited to see it. So everyone was very, very pleased about these sorts of changes. Not everybody. <laughs> The Rust zealots, the Rust advocates, the followers of the Church of Rust, as you can imagine, were a little bit grouchy. They were grouchy not only that this change was occurring, they were already ranting and raving around the internet about it. But then I went ahead and posted the following over on X, and it really stuck in their craw. Quote, it appears that JavaScript is faster than Rust, at least for some things. End quote. <laughs> that really made him grouchy. Um, in fact, it made him so grouchy that they created a community note over on X for this. Um, after the, the post had about 100, 150,000 views, something like that, uh, they put the following quote over on X. Rust itself is faster than JavaScript, but having to deal with an FFI add-on, uh, FFI added a non-trivial cost, which was the bottleneck, end quote. So here's the thing. Here's what I wrote again. 
It appears that JavaScript is faster than Rust, at least for some things. <laughs> Which got community noted because they said that statement was wrong because, paraphrasing, Rust is faster than JavaScript for some things. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, JavaScript is faster than Rust for some things is wrong, uh, but Rust is faster than JavaScript for some things is right, even though that's saying the exact same thing. The statements are the same. Uh, now, I understand. I get it. Reading comprehension is difficult for some people, especially when you are a member of a brainwashed cult like the Church of Rust. I get it. It's hard. But I said that JavaScript is faster than Rust for some things. Obviously, not everything is for some things. Uh, you can probably make the same statement about any programming language slash framework slash compiler comparison. This is faster than that for some things, right? I made possibly what could... Uh, be the most benign and boring statement humanly possible about comparing two programming languages. Because, I mean, you know what? Honestly, I bet you if you dig hard enough, you could find a way where GW friggin' basic is faster than, I don't know, Rust for something. I bet you there's something. I bet you there's probably uh, compile time, considering GW Basic isn't a compiled language. But there you go. There's probably something. It's it's ridiculous. But man, were they upset? Oh, uh, uh, the Theo guy over on uh, over that YouTuber uh, took to X and said this might actually be the dumbest tweet I've ever read on this site. Uh, I, I take that as a Badge of honor, Mr. Theo Mann. Um, a YouTuber Brody Robertson wearing anime cat ears then said, at this point, it's not even worth addressing how completely detached from reality any of Lunduk's programming takes are. If he's, if he's just rage baiting, he's very consistent. But if not at this point, I think he might genuinely not even realize how stupid he is, end quote. So uh, that's an interesting point there, Mr. Cat Ears Man. <laughs> Oh my heavens. Oh my heavens. I <laughs> I'm 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 amused. I'm deeply deeply amused. Now is is this terribly interesting news that one specific project out there migrated from Rust to a different programming language? No. No, it's really not. It, it, it does go to show you, though, that there are people out there who are making decisions for their projects based on pure engineering and not based on religious zealotry. And to me, that was inspiring. That was that made me happy to see people making decisions based on what was the best for their project. Um, now, uh, realistically, are there probably some good reasons to use Rust for this uh, Prisma Prisma? Uh, database backend. You know what? There probably are. There probably, if you sit down and list out all the pros and cons, my guess is it's not 100% one-sided. It never is when you're making these sorts of engineering decisions. But clearly, they decided that the combination of significantly faster queries and the fact that they had a larger pool of, of developers to work with, of experienced developers who were more familiar with JavaScript than, they, than there are that are really familiar with Rust, made moving from Rust to JavaScript a valuable and worthwhile engineering decision. And, and so uh, uh, kudos to the Prisma team for doing that. Uh, they're going to get yelled at by, by Rust. <laughs> church members for for a long long time they're gonna i would be i would be completely surprised if they weren't branded as fascists and nazis somehow uh, because that seems to be how it goes uh, they the 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 attack happens in that way uh, watch we'll watch and see what what happens with it but i'm guessing at some point that'll occur uh thank you the lunduk journal subscribers for allowing me to do this sort of coverage um, and and cause uh, members of the Church of Rust to be very, very grumpy. <laughs> and to be very clear, 
<laughs> What's funny about all this to me, at least, is I have no real problem with Rust as a as a programming language. I really don't. Like it's like syntactically, uh, it's a little cumbersome in my opinion. Uh, there's some issues with it from a, an engineering standpoint, but there's issues with every language from a, an engineering standpoint. Um, I, I used to, and I've told this this before, but one of the the questions that I asked. Back when I was, you know, a, a dev hiring manager, when I asked a, a prospective new programmer coming in, was I'd ask them, what's their f favorite programming language, right? What is their absolute favorite programming language? If they could pick one language that, that they would just go to for their hobby projects, that, that they just love that programming language, I'd ask them what that is. And I'd say, great. Now tell me why you hate it, <laughs> right? Because if any, any developer, who has worked with any programming language in, in real world environments for any length of time is going to have their favorite and they're going to hate it. They're going to be able to list off a, 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 just a laundry list, like a CVS receipt of every drawback to that accursed programming language. Like me personally, I like C. I like C quite a bit. There's a lot of problems with C, right? And there just are. Um, anyone who's working with any language is going to be immediate. They're going to go, yeah, let's dog on that language because that's what engineers do. What, what baffles me about the, the Church of Rust is that when they see a criticism of Rust, instead of piling on and going, yeah, man, I love it, but I hate it so much. And they just dog on it and they have a laundry list of awful things about it. Instead of that, they circle the wagons and they declare that anyone who's, who's criticizing Rust is evil, is bad, is stupid, must not be a programmer at all. Oh man, it's a, it's a, it's a skill issue if they don't know how to use Rust right. And they just go at them. It's fascinating. It is the least engineering-ish community. Not a community is the wrong word. Culture. It's the least engineering-ish culture that I've ever seen in the world of programming. And there are admittedly many programming languages in the past where you could point to them and say, eh, getting a little culty there, like Java developers and a couple of other ones. Um, but none of them. None of them act like the Rust culture does. It's just so, so cultish. It's it's wild. Anyway, thank you to the Lunduke Journal subscribers for allowing me to cover all of it because it's, honestly, I find it utterly fascinating. Um, uh, if you go to lunduke.com, there's a bunch of ways you can get a free subscription to Lunduke Journal and Locals and Substack and uh, the, the audio podcast and YouTube and Patreon and uh, uh, did I say Rumble, Locals, Facebook, all of it. It's it, There's so many options up there. Go up there and grab one uh, or two. It's fantastic. And we've also got a deal going out throughout the month of December where lifetime subscriptions are just 89 bucks. Um, we, 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 oh, we had this deal going at the end of last month. Uh, and I, I, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to read you what I wrote here about it uh, so you know why it's going through the month of December. Last month, the Lunduke Journal ran a wild discount. 89 bucks for a lifetime subscription. That's crazy. And then a few days after the deal ended, multiple people tried to pick up a lifetime subscription at that now discounted price. Right? So the deal was over. People came in and tried to pick up the $89 discounted lifetime subscription. This left me with two choices. The first was that I either give them that mega discounted lifetime subscription, even though the deal was already over, or I tell them to buzz off. I tell them that they were too late, and then I, I send them a refund. So I thought about it. I thought about it long and hard, and I thought about it for about five minutes, and I decided to go with option number three. Let them have that ultra discounted lifetime subscription, right? So 89 bucks or 99 bucks, depending on where they pick it up, and then open that discount back up to everyone else for the whole friggin' month. It's December, man. We're all busy. We've all got a million things to do. Uh, we all could use to save a couple of bucks, so why the heck not? Uh, I'm the boss of the Lunduke Journal. <laughs> There's no, there's no shareholders above me. Uh, no one can tell me to not do something. So I can make crazy decisions like this all the time. And there's absolutely no one to stop me, for better or worse. 
Um, also, for the rest of the month on uh, Locals or on Substack, you can pick up 50% uh, off monthly or yearly subscriptions. Um, so it's uh, it's $89 for a lifetime subscription if you buy it with Bitcoin or 99 bucks if you buy it with uh, through Substack or or locals. Um, they, they all work exactly the same. Uh, the difference, the $10 difference there is that with Bitcoin, there's not the extra like card processing fees and whatnot. So I am, as they say, passing the savings on to you. Uh, that's really the only difference there. That's, that's, that's just how it is. You, you choose uh, either go Bitcoin or Substack or locals. It's all absolutely fantastic. There's a link up at lunduke.com, uh, scroll down and it, there's a little all December long, $89 lifetime subscription. And seriously, thank you to everyone who has become a subscriber to the Lunduke Journal. I don't know if you saw this, but man, we have been uh, breaking every single month. We've been breaking records. I mean, it's millions more views and listens every single month. Thanks to all of you. And all of those shows are free for the world to enjoy. And subscribers get extra perks like the MP4 downloads and the forums and the PDF eBooks. And, and they get added to the lifetime subscriber wall of super awesome, classy, good smelling people, which that wall keeps on growing. I've got a few more people to add to it now as well. Uh, and it just keeps on getting bigger. Thank you to all of those subscribers. I, I truly couldn't do it without you. The London Journal has been able to be big tech free and completely free of taking any money from any company, uh, not, a, not a penny in sponsorships or ads or anything else for years now. And the result is that we've been able to cover some crazy stuff. Some of it's goofy, like this episode here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> really, we're just we're just poking at the rust zealots a little bit. We see a little little beehive with a little rust logo on it. We just can't help grabbing a stick and poking at it a little bit. But some of this stuff that we cover here is truly important. And uh, you know, some of the some of the leaks that we've gotten from IBM and Red Hat and Microsoft and Adobe and and on and on and on, diving into the financial records of so many foundations and organizations and really exposing a lot of a lot of open source companies and projects and big tech companies for some of the really crazy things that are happening within the world of computing right now. It wouldn't be done without all of you supporting the Lunduke Journal. If you didn't support the Lunduke Journal, I would have to go and get sponsorship from Microsoft and IBM. And that would result in me not being able to cover any of these stories, not, not, a, not a lick of them, which means that no one would cover those stories because most of the stories that get covered by the Lunduke Journal don't get covered by any other tech journalist, not one. And you see that in the in the numbers of people that are checking these stories out, millions more every month. It is it's absolutely phenomenal. And it's and it's really thanks to all of you. It truly is. It would not be possible without all of you. So thank you. Uh, thank you from the bottom of my heart. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, boys, and I'm going to get yelled at for this one, by the way. <laughs> I get yelled at so much, and that makes me smile. Boys and girls, nerds and nerdettes across the inner tubes, I do declare and broadcast. <laughs>